Patrick, who's in today. I know. <laughs> Our Carol. Our Carol. Soon to be Phoebe's Carol. Is there something I should know about Carol? At the Eyes and Worth practice. Hello, love. How Hello. are you? Oh, I'm OK. How are you? Scott, oh, I'm good. Who have you got Phoebe, for us today? The receptionist Hi. Gina Hi. are about to begin a challenging right. day yeah. with one of the <laughs> clinic regulars. All right, let's have a look, eh? Hello. Oh, hello, Willow. And then we got Shimmy. And Harry's in the back. Okay, well, I'll take Harry because I need the muscles. You girls get those too. I always love it when Carol comes to town. When she comes into the practice, she always has multiple cats. Carol, who's been eating the pies? I Harry wonder, has. I wonder. I told you it was heavy. <laughs> They're all crazy. They're all strong willed. They're all very feisty. Very much like the lovely Carol herself. Right, um, no cigar for working out what his problem might be. Yeah. <laughs> the first patient Honest. is Harry. Yeah. Harry's definitely the biggest cat I've ever seen in my entire life. I was a bit worried that he was going to break the scales at one point. What I'd probably say, Carol, is that whenever a cat is sort of covering the whole way scale, that, that might be bad. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, he is quite overweight. Yeah. So I think the big thing with him is put all the other cat's food up so you know what he's eating because yes, it's the only food that's on the ground. I never thought of that. That's a good idea. Yeah, OK. And what it might do is encourage him to lose weight and be more athletic because then he'll be able to jump up eventually and get the food. If his food motivated, yes. hopefully the motivation will lead to yeah. weight loss because he'll just be a bit more energetic. With Harry, he lives in a multi-cat household. It's really hard to control the portion sizes of each cat. Harry is just sitting beside the bowl and absorbing everything that's left. And as a result, his waistline is getting bigger and bigger, he's getting more lazy and therefore putting on more weight. All right, so a diet for you, my friend. Next cab off the rank is Shimmy. Out you come, there you go. Unfortunately for Shimmy, she's got quite a long coat and every year she suffers in the heat, she sweats and then produces mats. And because of her feisty nature, she won't let Carol groom her. <laughs> Maybe what we'll try and do is just see if she'll let us just hold her and clip it off. What do you think? <laughs> it's entirely up to you. If you want to dice with death, feel free. But I'm going to stand right over there, right out the way. I'll tell you now. <laughs> Shimmy's skin is suffering as a result of this matted coat. So as a result, we need to clip it all away. But to do that, we need to give Shimmy just a whiff of gas. She'll be asleep just momentarily whilst that hair is trimmed away. So we're going to keep her. And last but not least, Willow. Then Willow hey, coming out. The cat that comes out of the last box is Willow, who is my, my personal favourite. She is so adorable. She's a really, really sweet cat. It's a little alien cat. Hey. Carol and I have known for quite a while now that Willow is suffering with a viral condition called Khaleesi virus, which is one of the cat flu viruses, and it leads to a cat having really severe and ongoing gingivitis, which is inflammation of the gums. So with Willow. Unfortunately, it's not something that she will ever be able to get rid of. Okay. What we need to do, as horrible as it sounds, is to actually remove every single one of her teeth. Will she be able to eat properly without her teeth? She'll be just fine. Bone underneath will so. still be there. She'll be having gums that are nice and healthy now, and she'll better eat, no problems. Willow's teeth are really, really painful, and I'm definitely with Scott that the best thing to do is just get them all out now. It's safer for her, it means that she won't have to undergo multiple anaesthetics in her life, and it will just make her a lot more comfortable. Good girl. I'm pretty concerned about Willow. She's so tiny, and to have an anaesthetic when she's so tiny, she's very precious. She's the one I keep an eye on most. Good mm -hmm. Good girl. The rowers along the river. In Richmond, Claire's morning walk Good with her daughters boy. and the family's two Jeremy. Boston Terriers isn't as pacey as usual. <laughs> Come on, collect walking's fun. Recently, four-year-old Morticia has been struggling to keep up with big brother Gomez. Good doggies. Both dogs are very active and walk about six miles a day. But I think there's a problem with Morticia because she's been walking in a slightly ungainly fashion, which is really quite 
worrying. Oh, she looks tired. And Frankie, in particular, is struggling with the idea that Morticia could have a serious problem. Our bond is so unique because they came into my life when I really needed cheering up. Five years ago, Frankie suffered a brain hemorrhage, and Gomez and Morticia were brought especially to help her rehabilitate. While she's in her coat mooch for a month, I said to Maxine, her sister, um, do you think it would be a good idea if we got doggies? So I found a breeder, and I ordered two Bostons. She loved them. In the early days, walking was challenging for me, and walking was also challenging for them, so we were kind of in the same position. And so we both walked quite slowly. And then as they progressed to walk faster and start running and stuff, it sort of made me want to walk faster and sort of progress my walking as well. So I think they, they pushed me to, um, to get better faster. Little tissue woo kids. With Frankie's health ordeal behind her, it's now Morticia who needs help. She's booked in to see Scott later today. Oh, good girl. Right, should we get an IV in her then and get cracking? I think so. All right, you hold our little lady for us, that's it. At the Isleworth practice, Scott and new vet Phoebe are preparing Devon Rex Willow for surgery. Scott has no choice but to remove all the two-year-old cat's teeth. Oh, baby. So, seems like she's fairly stable on this anaesthetic. Mm. Her breath is pretty pungent, my love. Okay. okay, so I'll start by removing the teeth on this side and you can have a go on the other side. Okay. Next door, Willow's housemate Shimmy is also being anaesthetised by vet Tina and nurse Gina. Not for surgery, but for a much needed haircut. We're going to do a line cut today, so short back and sides, fluffy tail and fluffy face. The feisty feline refuses to be groomed. So her thick coat has become matted and knotted. I think it looks pretty good. She's looking much better. She is. You could make another cat yeah. out of that, couldn't you? It's one of those no pain, no gain scenarios. Mm -hmm. Pay in the short term for a long term gain. Two hours later. Here's your girls. Oh my word. Carol has arrived at the clinic to collect her precious cats. She's still a little bit sleepy. She doesn't have any teeth. I'm not kissing you. Unlike this one. Here's the unveiling. You ready? Go on then. <laughs> Oh, look at you. I know, fancy, huh? Got rid of all those knots. Yeah. Shimmy! <laughs> <laughs> Go away, she says. I'm not coming to you. Let's hope her demeanour lasts now that she's been clipped. Shimmy looks really nice. Won't last long, but she does look nice at the moment. <laughs> and she's happier, hopefully. We'll find out when we get home. Hello. She's such a brave little thing. And I'm just going to quickly show you her okay. new mouth, OK? Willow will be much oh, more comfortable now that. that she's had all her teeth removed. All right, so a little bit of blood in there, which is completely fair enough, but that'll come right in a few days' time. But she's been a very brave girl. She's been a good girl. Yeah. Doesn't matter if she's got teeth or not. Willow is Willow, and that's it. Part of the family. Yeah, you're great. So shall we help you to the car? Give you a bit of peace, yes, All right. please. Thank you. <laughs> Come on, then. OK. Come on, you two. All right. At the Richmond Clinic, it's an exciting morning for Scott and the team. They're getting ready to welcome back an important member of the practice. We first met Ryan as one of our clients when we first started these practices. A very warm, friendly guy, absolutely loves his animals. And then after a while, we offered him a job. He took it, he came on as one of our receptionists and then worked so hard as a mature student to get into university. And now he's studying as a vet. We couldn't be prouder. Here's the boy. Hello. Hi, Hello, Scott. mate. How are you? How are you? Today, Ryan's returning to undertake work placement as part of his veterinary degree. Very good. How's the university treating you? Fine, yeah, really yeah. well. Really good, thank you. Yeah. Oh, I'm so proud of you. Oh, bless you. It's amazing, isn't it? It means a lot to be back here. 
Uh, Scott and the team have done so much for me. I'm so happy to be a part of the team again. You ready for a few challenges? Yeah, yeah. Put me through my paces. Go and put the uniform on like Superman mm -hmm. and get stuck in. Get stuck in? Yeah. All right. All right, mate. Okay. Good luck. Thank you. <laughs> He's gonna need it. <laughs> <laughs> Good job, is boy. And Ryan's yep. first patient is Good not far terms. away. Yep. Claire has arrived with her two Boston Terriers, Gomez and Morticia. She's worried four-year-old Morticia may have a problem with her left knee, and she's hoping to get some answers. Hello, Claire. Hi. Hello, Morticia. Hello, Gomez. How are you? This is Ryan. Hello, hi. hi. That's Morticia, who's our patient. I've seen Morticia quite a lot over the last few years, and two years ago she had an issue with her knee. She had a diagnosis of a dislocating or luxating patella, basically where the kneecap pops out of the groove that it sits in. Claire and I made the decision to go ahead with surgery. We got a great result, and two years later, unfortunately, the other leg is starting to show similar signs. So, Ryan, you might feel a little set up right now, but Claire and I know what the issues are with this dog. Okay. And you are on a journey of discovery, my friend. Right, okay. All right. Come on then. Come on, Tishy. Come on. In the early stages of your veterinary career, it's a lot of theory. So I think it's the perfect opportunity to put him through his paces as a trainee vet to see what the examination is like, what that shows up, and then what Ryan's diagnosis is. So tell me, what's been going on? Uh, well, Tisha has a little problem when she runs. She okay. skips a little bit. Right, Looks okay. quite cute, but it's not a normal no. run. No. I guess importantly, which leg have you noticed this on? <laughs> mm. <laughs> oh, we're giving away so much. Uh, I don't know what? if we should say. I already knew. <laughs> oh, sure. Yeah. With your x-ray vision. I, I was... It's amazing what they teach them at uni these days. <laughs> Unbelievable. Okay, well, I think it's probably about time. All those questions are lovely, but I think you probably want to put your hands on I the do. dog. I do, yes. Yeah. Come on, little oh, tissue. No. Oh, sweetie, I've got to get a bit closer, I'm afraid. Okay. During the examination of Morticia, you can see that Ryan's a little bit nervous. He's a little bit tentative. He doesn't want to injure his patient because he is inexperienced, and that's all fair enough. But he is being methodical. He checks each one of the legs and the joints of each leg as well before coming to his diagnosis. So it would appear that that's slipping out of place. Yeah. Um, so Morticia has a luxating patella. Exactly. Yes. Little girl. Morticia's problem is that she has something called a medially dislocating patella. So basically her kneecap pops out of the groove that it's supposed to sit in and moves towards the centre of her body. By doing so, it stretches the patella ligament, it's uncomfortable and it means that the dog skips when she's at the park. Unfortunately, we need to go for surgery because mm -hmm. that constant rubbing, 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 yeah. rubbing all day, every day, mm -hmm. you will see arthritic development and okay. that will then impede her lifelong ability to enjoy the park, which I know she really does. She does. She loves so it. So we need to ensure her future by doing surgery okay. in the present. Okay. Oh, little tissue, poor doggy. I don't really like the thought of an operation and anaesthetic. Not good for her to have to be operated on, but at least it will save her from pain later in life. So, little lady, you're going to stay with me and Uncle Ryan and crack this dislocating kneecap once and for all. Okay, all right, Gomez. say goodbye to your brother. Look, he's Let's quivering go. and he's not even getting surgery done. Come on, goodness. Mm. All right, little see you later. Bye. Bye bye. See ya. Bye. Bye. Come on then, come and get your dinner. Come on. In Isleworth, one of Scott's regular patients has an all-too-familiar problem. Good boy. Dylan is a four-and-a-half-year-old English Bull Terrier who adores his food, and owner Jane admits she finds it hard to say no. I think by giving them extra treats, I think, yes, you do. You feel that you... because you love them and you want them to love you back, so you do tend to give them little extras, which we shouldn't. One more. Good boy. He's sitting there looking at you, thinking, yeah, go give me some mum. <laughs> but yes, I think it is a love thing. I think because you do love your animals and you want to feed them. Piling on the pounds can cause serious medical issues, as Jane knows all too well. 
being overweight, I've had some very bad times with my back, my neck, my shoulders, um, my breathing. You know, even just going up and down the stairs, I'm out of breath. And obviously that is not what I want for Dylan. Jane has her weight issues under control, and now it's Dylan's turn to count the calories. I think it is very important that Dylan needs to be checked uh, for his weight. Dylan is booked in to see Scott, and Jane's hoping he'll help her dish up some tough love. All gone. All gone. Hi, Rankin. Hi. Ryan's going to tell you what problem Morticia has. So Morticia so has a luxating patella. Oh, yeah. Which knee is it? Her it's left. left. Her left, OK. At the Richmond practice, Scott and trainee vet Ryan are preparing Morticia for her knee operation. All that rubbing long term leads to arthritis, and there's nothing that your vet can do about it. No. So that's why it's better to prevent the issue or nip it in the bud. Vet nurses Reagan and Sam will be assisting. Good girl, well done. So what we need to do is to give her an anaesthetic and get on with the surgery. All right? You're a good girl, aren't you? Bow-legged dogs are having their knees pop out of the joint. So out it pops like that, see? Put your finger there, you can feel the groove. And then just beside oh, yeah. it, you can okay. feel the kneecap. You can, yes. OK, now push it back. Wow. Feel yeah. gross? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's disturbing. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what we're going to fix. OK. All right. Flush a bit of oxygen into that. This will be Ryan's first chance to scrub in for a surgery. Scott will be mentoring him every step of the way. Ready? Okay, let's, let's go, go for your first surgical experience. I'd always wanted to be a vet. It's great to be able to come back as a vet student and um, prove myself, really. I know that Scott's going to really push me, and that's great for me. All right, so Sam, you happy? I'm happy. Yeah, all good? good. Ryan, you happy? I'm ready. Let's yeah. go. He looks nervous. <laughs> Well done. It's been really great working with Ryan today. It's great to be part of this process of discovery as he learns to be a vet and hopefully to inspire him to continue to forge forward and to try things that he maybe wouldn't feel comfortable with before. Go on then, my beauty. Here we go. Oh, let's get you in a snuggly bed. Morticia will spend the afternoon sleeping off her sedation and hopefully go home with Ona Claire tomorrow. Girl. You're such a brave little thing, aren't you, eh? Good boy, come on. Jane is on. bringing in Dylan, her go. rather chubby English yeah. bull terrier, and his housemate, Delilah. Hi, Jane. Hello. How are you? Dylan and Delilah. Hello, Dylan. <laughs> Hello, mate. How are you? Hello, big boy. Jane, are we thinking that um, your Dylan's uh, a little bit more of a handful than he normally is? Uh, yes, he is a little bit. A little bit over. You can't say no to that face, though, can you? I absolutely love when Dylan comes into the practice and I absolutely love English Bull Terriers. Just maybe not so much of this particular one. Now, Jane, you know I had an English Bull Terrier, white English Bull Terrier, yes. exactly like yours. Yep. So I have a good sense of how heavy they should be. Should be. So let's find out how heavy okay. your boy actually is. Come, Come on, on then, big then. boy. Up on there. A healthy weight for a male English Bull Terrier Dylan size should be around 30 to 35 kilos. When I get him on there, he's over 39 kilograms. It shows that he is clearly overweight and this is a problem that we need to address. Come on, big boy. Let's go. Come on, Jane. You've got to hear this as well. Come on. Being overweight is a serious issue. In the UK alone, about a third of dogs are thought to be either overweight or obese, and that can considerably reduce their lifespan. How much is he eating at home? He just has um, a tub of yogurt for breakfast. Uh, right. Only a small, a small tub. Right. Of an evening, it's just his main biscuit meal. And then, being that he is such a lovable, friendly, cuddly chap, does he kind of convince you that he should be getting more than that? Yes, he's very... Um, he Persuasive. Would oh, very much so, yeah. Well, I mean, just looking at him physically, he is more like a brick than an hourglass. One thing you should be able to do with is feel their ribs, and you can barely feel his, and that means he's just got a little bit too much padding. A little bit too much fat. A little bit chubby than you should be, hey, mate. Uh, but, yeah, you know, 
Obesity can be really dangerous for dogs. Yeah. They can get heart disease, they can have respiratory problems, they can have major joint issues, they can even get diabetes, or worst case scenario, even cancer. So this is a serious problem and we need to come up with a solution that's gonna mean that Dylan loses weight. I do love my dogs and I want what's best for them. So I'd like to get some weight off him if possible. So I would definitely cut out dairy products 100%. Okay. And most dogs are actually lactose yeah. intolerant anyway. He absolutely so. loves cheese, but we yeah. tend not to try I've got to let living. you answer your own question yeah, on that so one. so <laughs> no more cheese. No more cheese, no. What about exercise then? He's not one for playing. Very right. much. You throw a ball, it'll look at you and say, well, well you threw it, potato. you go and get it. <laughs> <laughs> the solution to pets being overweight is the same in people. It's because they're either eating too much or exercising too little. Crack out the lycra, you know, headbands and leg warmers and... <laughs> and then we'll have you come in for uh, the grand weigh-in very soon. Okay. Yeah? Let's go and get those leg warmers on. Come on, hey, hey, where's the lycra? Where is it? Hey, there it is. Here we go, good boy. This looks super wild, look at this. At Scott's house oh. in Surrey. Nice and gentle puppies. His wife Zoe and the kids are enjoying some playtime with one-year-old Scully and the elder lady of the house, Betty. So when Scott and I met, Betty was eight months old and she was very much his little girl. And when I arrived, I was the other woman to Betty and uh, she used to look at me with total and utter disrespect. And if I said anything, she sort of looked at Scott a bit like, uh, it's talking again. So uh, I was definitely the other woman in the relationship. So along comes Scully and she doesn't just enter our lives, she bowls in as this little ball of fluff. <laughs> She's been an amazing addition to the family. It really has worked out better than we could have expected. We're so happy that Scully was born. The children love the dogs as much as we do. And the adorable little face of yours. <laughs> and now something's got to happen that makes her from a little baby into a proper little girl. And I'm not looking forward to it. It's spay time. Mm, poor baby. Are you into surgery? As a former vet nurse, Zoe is understandably nervous. A dog being spayed, it's the right thing to do. We're not going to breed from her, but it doesn't change the fact that she's got to go through surgery. It's going to be really hard, but it's got to be done. Baby, mummy's little fur baby. Exercise for you today, boy. Jane has brought four-year-old Dylan and his housemate Delilah to the park to meet Scott. Here's a good boy. The aim is to get the overweight dog motivated to move more and hopefully lose some weight. Dylan doesn't really know what's going to hit him. It's going to be put through his paces. He's uh, not a great one for playing with a ball, so I think a little bit of extra exercise will be brilliant. There's Dylan there. Oh, OK. Scott has enlisted Hi, Ryan Jane. to help Jane Hi, with overweight Hi, Dylan's exercise program. This is Ryan. Hello there. Uh, he's my vet student, so that's your patient. <laughs> this is the big boy. Uh, yes. <laughs> he's uh, been on his diet, like you said. Oh, Kept him to it. No treats. Good girl. Been very hard. Today, Ryan is going to squire Dylan through his first exercise session. And first of all, we need to understand what motivates this dog. Uh, so with us, we have these uh, low-fat metabolic treats. Um, oh! Yeah. <laughs> wow. wow! That's the reason you're in this mess. <laughs> hey! Oh my Can't goodness! All at once. We know food motivates him. We need to see if there's any other treats or toys, anything else that will get this dog off the couch and run around the park. What about this one, buddy? What about this one? Oh! Oh, that's a... Yes. All right, well... Let's get physical, as Olivia Newton-John said. <laughs> Before my time spot. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> it's very important with Dylan that we start very slowly. He's an overweight and unfit dog, so we can't run a marathon straight away. Come on, come on. 
start with short, sharp bouts of exercise. We would get his heart rate up by using things like toys to get him motivated, get him running around, burning off the energy as he goes. Good boy, Dylan. Good boy. Good boy. Dylan. Good boy. Oh, there we go. Oh, good boy. Let's have a look. Oh. So as you can see, his, um, his heart rate's up, so is mine. So all good signs. He's, um, he's definitely getting the exercise that he needs now. Hey, mate, you look like you enjoyed that. I think he's a star pupil for today. So look, exercise and diet, they're the keys. And healthy weight loss for a dog is about 1% to 2% of their body weight. <laughs> good boy. <laughs> so about 400 grams a week would be fine, 1.6 kilograms a month. And very soon, he should be able to, uh, well, be beach ready. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good girl. How you doing? You all right? Let's just see if you're going to use that leg. Oh, clever girl. Clever girl. Yeah. The next day, four-year-old Morticia is recovering well from her knee operation. Well done. Not bad for one day post-surgery. Hey, you're already using your foot. Good girl. And that means the little dog can go home with her owner Claire and doggy sibling Gomez. It's all right, baby. You haven't got to stay. We're just collecting your sister. She'll be here in a minute. All right, let's go see Mummy, hey? Send you home. Mm. Good yeah, good girl. Hello. Oh, my little girl dog. Here's your girl. Hello, baby. Say hello, oh. Mummy. Hello, my little girl. Oh, little girl, look at me. Who's that? Little sister. Get to kiss her. Say hello, you. Oh, baby doggy. Oh, I'm so pleased to have Morticia back. She's only been away for just over a day, but I missed her lots. So I'm really happy with the way the surgery went, and I think the proof is in the pudding and the fact she's already putting her foot down, which is wonderful. Oh, well, at least it's all gone well. Good it girl. has, it has. You were absolutely right in doing this right now because we've got ahead of the game. We haven't let arthritis set in before we fix the problem, so it's prevention better than cure. Morticia has been such a brave little dog. She's such a great little patient. But more importantly, she's a really important part of Claire and her family's life. So I'm just really glad that I've been able to pass it back to mum in one piece. All right then, sweet pea. Good girl, be a good girl. If it's all right, I'll come and see you very soon once you're Maybe. walking much better. Oh, yeah? my little cherub, come on. <laughs> Let's start all, all right then. Here. So we'll take her home tonight, and I've got her little bed set out by the foot where I'll sit on the settee and she'll be on the floor next to me. So she'll be on her way to recovery. Good girl, Tishy, good girl. Going home. Come on, puppy. Later that day, Scott's wife Zoe and good the family girl. puppy Scully are yeah, arriving for their appointment. My little baby is going into surgery for her space. It's an anaesthetic and um, it's kind of just sort of dawned on me today, really, what a big deal it is. It's, yeah, it's a tough day. She's not silly though, she knows. She's like, consult table, that can't be good. <laughs> <laughs> Every dog feels the same way. <laughs> yeah. Obviously it's a very serious operation today and even though Scully is my dog, I still want to perform a full and complete physical exam on her. All good? All good. Yes. Lovely, yep. She's a perfectly healthy and happy, and may I say, very beautiful puppy. So I know this isn't a question that normally gets asked to the vet, but how are you feeling about today? <laughs> yeah, I'm a little bit nervous. It's weird, isn't it? You know, it's, um, it's a strange situation because it's like operating on one of your children. Mm. So honey, here's a question for you. Do you want to be a part of the surgery, be in the anaesthetic and be in the surgery room. Well, okay, I wasn't expecting you to ask me that. Um... Just before we were married, Zoe and I actually set up a practice in Portugal. And once the babies were born, we came back to the UK and this is where our life has really flourished. So she has experience at being a vet nurse and understands all the pitfalls of anaesthetics and surgery. So I invite her to come into the surgery with me and to hold Scully by her little fairy paw. 
it's a hard one, isn't it? Because obviously I'm fine in surgery, as I have been in the past, you know, when I was nursing for you. Um, then for it to be our little girl. But then also I can't imagine sitting outside waiting. So yes, if that's okay, yeah, I'll come in. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Although you can't do that normal wifey thing where you sort of look and go, hm, you missed a bit. <laughs> you missed a spot. <laughs> Yeah, you can't do that, okay? Uh, all right, fine, but you are going to have to clear up after yourself. Don't expect me to do it. <laughs> I've got nurses for that. <laughs> Is that why you are the way you are at home? Mm, interesting. <laughs> so the old team is back together again. Zoe and me as vet and nurse. We're much better at husband and wife, however. Let's go. <laughs> Come on, Fluff Ball. Let's go. Hey, Jess, the Millers are here. Hi, Scully. So our little baby is in for her spay today. At the Richmond Clinic, vet nurse Jess will be assisting Scott and Zoe with Scully's operation. Brave Jess facing not only her boss, but also the boss's wife and their dog. I mean, it's bad enough when you have to deal with your boss, but boss's wife, watch yourself. <laughs> brave girl, sweet girl, brave girl. Scott has been a part of Scully's life from the moment she was born. And what you're going to do is you're going to rub it really firmly on the chest. Scott delivered her by caesarean section 12 months ago. Ems, how's it going out there? And she was later given to him by the grateful owner. Four, five, six, breathing puppy! Hey, good <laughs> job, well done. Quite nostalgic moments like this where, for Scully, she was born in my hands on the very table that I do for Spay. I mean, Daddy, love you very much. Okay. Oh, sleepy, sleepy. Here we go. Here we go. Okay, so I'm just going to clip that okay. lovely puppy tummy of hers, okay? Lovely tummy. We'll just move her through. Yeah, no worries. I'll go grab a scrub top. Yeah. Stay out your way. That's right. Okay. Come on, baby. Love you, baby. How do you put into words how you feel in that moment? I'm both a mother of children and a mother to my little puppy as well, and it's time to go into surgery. This spay went completely without a hitch. There was no complications whatsoever. So it meant that the stress for Zoe and I was over quite quickly and that Scully could wake up. Here we go. Hello. You know, it is extraordinary to think she popped out into life on this very table. It's right mad, here. isn't it? Mm. Scully will stay at the clinic for a little longer before going home later today. All done. Let this be the last time you come in to see Daddy at work. <laughs> OK, you two, time for lunch. Nicely. Good boy. It's been eight weeks since Dylan was put on a diet. His owner, Jane, has now replaced his treats with healthy, fresh fruit and vegetables. Good boy. Come on. Good boy. Come on. And today, there's time for one last jog in the park before Dylan's big weigh-in at the clinic. So I think he quite enjoys all the exercise and the running that will help to bring his heart rate up and to get him uh, a bit more active and to help him to lose the weight. Getting a bit puffed, but I'm enjoying it. Yeah, so hopefully I'll lose some weight myself. <laughs> See how much you've lost. Hopefully you've lost a nice bit of weight. Hello. Oh. Hello, handsome boy. <laughs> Dylan. Hello. Hello, Hello mate. Boy. How are you? He's gone straight to Dr. Scott. I love my boy. <laughs> well, he knows who to keep sweet, doesn't he? Seeing Dylan walk into the practice, he is sprightly and he's happy, but more importantly, he looks lean and mean and ready for the scales. So he was 39 kilograms before. Oh, wow. 35.4, that is absolutely incredible. Really good. Well done. Thank you. It's amazing. So he's lost four kilograms, which basically is about 10% of his body weight. So it's like if I lost about 10 kilograms, you definitely see it. And we definitely see it with your boy. Yeah. Well done. Okay. By Dylan losing all this weight, it means he's far less likely to develop issues with his heart. He's far less likely to develop arthritis as a result of all that extra weight, less likely of developing diabetes. He's generally gonna be a very healthy and happy boy moving forward. So he's still got a little bit of a tum, but what you can feel and see here, look at those, they're ribs. Yeah, well done, Jane. you've Thank done you. so well. Brilliant, good job. I'm really, really pleased that I've managed to keep him to his diet 
and not give him any extras. Um, uh, it's, it's been hard, but I've done it and I've spoiled him in a different way. Carrots and love. <laughs> no more cake for you, Dylan. In the Miller home, hey, Scully is well and truly Hello, recovered Bobby. from her space Hello. surgery, Hello, much Hello, to the relief of Scott's Hello. wife, Zoe. <laughs> no one chooses to put their animal through surgery or through anaesthetic, but this was an important decision, and it was the right decision to get her spayed. There we go. Wow. This is a bit of a treat, isn't it? What do you want? <laughs> <laughs> I cuddle with my puppy and my um, loving wife. Oh, there you go. Then, well, then you got it. You got it. Teal by you, that. Both Zoe and I were committed to neutering our dogs as we've always been. It's really important. There's so many unwanted and homeless dogs here in the UK and throughout the world, and neutering is the one way we can try and control those numbers. Oh, puppy. What do you think? What Should you I think jump up if I could? What do you think of that puppy? Oh. When Scully came back, she was a bit blue, and Betty was so lovely, because she just gave her that TLC and care that Scully always shows Betty, because she's so careful with her. But I do think she's much happier now. She's up and bouncing around, and the two of them can do their rough and tumbling again. Oh, this is a very beautiful family scene, isn't it? Hi, Claire, how are you? Hi, Scott. And Scott and is you. meeting Claire Hello. and her daughters to check Maxie. on Morticia's progress Hi. after the Boston Terrier's knee operation. Let me get my hands on that little patient. Hello, Tishy. Hello, 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 baby. Hello, baby. Hello, baby. You simply cannot push that kneecap out anymore. She's not painful at all. She's just sitting okay. here comfortable. That's very, very good. I'm so happy with that. So I think the proof really is in the pudding with you, isn't it, missus? We need to see you running around and hopefully that mischievous little skip of hers is uh, going away for good. So how can we get her to run? Ball. Ball? Ball. <laughs> She's just moving beautifully well, isn't she? Nice and strong on both legs. No evidence of the skipping at all, Cleo. I can't it's see okay, it isn't anyway. It's good, is it? Yeah. yeah. Ready? <laughs> Morticia is running so beautifully, moving so well, there doesn't seem to be any pain, no discomfort, and that knee looks absolutely perfect, so I'm very happy. I think her knees are perfect, but I think that fetch is rubbish. <laughs> that is awful. Okay. Well, Tish is off to the races again now. I can let her off the lead, she can run around and have a great time. And she's going to have years and years of no arthritis. Great. You've been brave and you've invested in the future of her knee health, which is great. And now all you need to invest in is maybe a little bit of dog training. <laughs> <laughs> I think we need to work on a fetch. <laughs> Hi, I'm Dr. Danny Dusek from Bondi Vet. If you love our show and want to see more, plus some amazing content about pets and how to care for them, hit the subscribe button. Click that little notification bell and we'll see you on our next video.